The Bad Boy Protects Me, Chapter 5. Broken Promises and Old Friends. Haley's POV. I was glad I won, to be honest with you. I don't think I could have handled him kissing me right then. I probably would have messed it up or made an idiot out of myself. I really enjoyed my time with him tonight. The one thing that was getting to me was that he lied to me about what happened to his face. I know someone did that to him. I saw that his knuckles were swollen too, telling me that he had been fighting with someone. (sighs) That was none of my business. Where to? I still have you for another hour and a half. He asked. I don't know. Wherever, really. I said with a shrug. Well, you are useless. He said, laughing, wrapping his arm around my shoulder. Hey, you're the one that said there is plenty to do here, baby girl. You're just not looking in the right place or something like that. I said, mocking him. Are you mocking me? He said, raising a brow. Here was me thinking you were quiet and sweet. He said, pouting. So, what if I am? What you gonna do about it, bad boy? I said, full of confidence, which is really not like me. You know, since I'm awkward, shy, and all that. He stopped on the spot, making me do the same. He turned to me, a smirk on his face. Don't make me kiss you, Haley, because I will. He said, a cheeky look on his face. Try it, and I will slap you. I said seriously. You sure about that? He said, inching close to me. My mouth went dry. No words came out. All I could do was nod. I saw the smirk creeping on his lips as he watched for my reaction. He leaned in, pushing my hair away from my eyes. I swallowed hard, pulling myself together. I decided in that moment, I am not going to let him get me that easily. Not again. You wish, Mr. Bad Boy. I said, pushing him away from me turning around and walking away from him. I think I liked you better when you were shy and quiet, Miss Haley. You were less cheeky that way. He chuckled, catching up to me. I don't know what you mean. Let's go get a milkshake, okay? I said with a smile. I don't know what it is about Avery. He seemed to make me feel like I can be myself around him. He made me feel confident. It made me forget that I've barely known him a full day. Milkshake? What are we, 12? He laughed. Shut up! It's my treat, I said, smiling. Fine, fine. He groaned, rolling his eyes at me, which made me giggle. The diner that did milkshakes was on the same street as the bowling alley. We didn't have far to go. Avery's arm fell around my shoulder again as we walked down the road. A comfortable silence fell between us. I found myself smiling a little bit. I think we should take away, then go walk around town. Prefer when it is this quiet. Okay, that's fine. I said, smiling up at him. We headed in, ordering our shakes, and then we both went for chocolate. Yum. We were chatting away and laughing. I was still wondering why he was wasting his time with me. I know he could get with any girl that he wants. I think a part of me is worried that he's got some trick up his sleeve, that all of this is just a joke. I know this is technically not a date, but it does kind of feel like one. Avery? I heard a voice say, making both of us stop. Scott, buddy, it's been a while. 
Avery replied. Far too long, where you been? Scott replied. The guys giving each other a man hug. I'm guessing they're friends? I stood there awkwardly as they chatted. You on a date? Scott said, looking at me, before turning back to Avery, raising a brow. What? No, of course not. Who do you think I am? Avery laughed. I'm not going to lie, that did hurt a little. Yes, it's not exactly a date, but Avery seemed disgusted at even the idea of it. I put my head down, not looking at any of them. That's what I thought. You don't do dates. Scott laughed. More of a hookup kind of guy. Scott added with a wink. Exactly. This is Haley, my new friend I met at that shithole of a school I now need to attend. Avery said. Scott turned to me. His eyes looked me up and down, a smirk appearing on his face. She's pretty cute, though. Scott said with a wink, making me blush. Avery didn't respond. I looked everywhere except at the two of them, playing with my hair, a nervous habit of mine. They chatted back and forth for the next few minutes. You should come down to the park with me. The old gang is there. Come hang out for a bit. Bring your new friend, too. Scott said, Park? Gang? Oh, please no. Please let Avery tell him no. Avery turned to me, and I saw from his face that he really wanted to go. I was hoping he was at least going to drop me off first. Fancy it? I will still make sure you're home by 11, promise. I haven't seen everyone in a while. He said, a hopeful look on his face. I knew I shouldn't. I still found myself nodding, telling him yes. With that, the biggest smile appeared on his face. I returned it. Mine not as big as his. Let's go. I need to get Haley back by 11, but we'll come once I drop her off home. Avery smiled. The three of us headed down the street, going to the park, I assume. I stayed by Avery's side, him and Scott talking away, catching up about all that's been going on with each other's lives, etc., etc. I only got out a week ago. I'm going to try to stay out of trouble, at least for a little while. Scott laughed. Jail? Was he talking about jail? Oh my, why did I agree to this? I'm going to meet a bunch of people who I don't even know, and they're probably the same as Avery. They get into trouble, like, a lot. Oh, and at the same time, oh, I really shouldn't be judging them, should I? They may get into trouble, and it doesn't mean they're bad people, right? I'm just nervous. <sighs> Soon enough, we arrive, heading to the group of people, about eight, I think, both guys and girls. Avery? One of the guys calls, rushing up to him. Daniel, how you doing, mate? He asks as they hug. The same happened with everyone else that was there. Everyone seemed to be glad to see Avery again. I stood in the background, awkwardly, letting him catch up with his friends. The last one to greet him was a girl, with dark hair and lots of piercings and tattoos. Hey, baby, it's been a while. We should hook up later, for old time's sake. She said, pressing herself against him. Yes, maybe we should. He replied, smirking at her. Who are you? She asked, looking at me. This is Haley, my new friend. Haley, this is Louisa, an old friend. Hey, Haley. Nice to meet you. She said, smiling sweetly at me. Old friends? Really, Avery? I think we were a little more than that. She added with a chuckle. Uh, hi. You too. I said shyly, giving her a small smile. Yes, that is true. He laughed. 
Are you coming to Haley, or are you going to stand there all night? He shouted, looking at me. Yes, I'm coming. I giggled nervously. And then I followed Avery and Louisa, joining everyone else. Everyone was sitting on the grass. A small fire going, everyone was drinking. I'm sure they were all smoking pot too. At least by the smell of it. I looked around at everyone. They do seem like the type of people that would hang out with Avery. As I looked around, I saw one of the guys snorting something that looked like drugs. Great. Avery, you want some? Daniel said, holding a joint to him. Yeah, sure. He said, taking it, and then taking a long drag. What about you, Haley? Drink, smoke, hook up? Daniel said, sitting down next to me. I shook my head, refusing to look at him because I would definitely be blushing. Haley doesn't do any of that stuff. Yeah. Avery said. Thanks for that, Avery. Tell everyone how much of a bore I am. Hmm, good girl. Maybe we should change that. Daniel said his hands going up towards my thigh. Don't even think about it, dude. She's out of bounds. Avery said, glaring at him, a warning tone in his voice. Sorry, mate. Thought you were only friends. Guess you are going after something else. Daniel said, winking at him. He never said anything. Just continued to glare at Daniel for a moment before they went right back to being buddies. What was all of that about? Possessive much? Avery took another draw of the joint before passing it back to Daniel. You still dealing? Daniel asked him. Dealing? Avery deals with drugs? Oh, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, no. Nah, not anymore. I cannot afford to get in any more trouble. I'll get locked up and I can't leave my mother. He said, pain in his eyes when he mentioned his mother. How's she doing? Daniel said with sympathy in his voice. Just the same, good and bad days. She'll get help when she's ready. Avery said disappointed yeah. and with a shrug. At least she has you, buddy. He smiled. I wonder what is wrong with his mother. He's not mentioned her to me before. Well, again, that's not really my business, is it? I pulled my knees to my chest, wrapping my arms around them. I rested my head on my arm. I was still feeling a bit uneasy about being here with everyone. Avery's attention soon fell on everyone else. And I got the feeling he was going to forget to take me home. I was hoping I'm wrong. But then again, if he smoked any more of that stuff, I'm not getting in the car with him. It was now 10.45 p.m. We were still at the park. He had not only smoked weed, but he had been drinking and took a line or two of whatever drug they had with them. If that wasn't bad enough, he had been ignoring me for the past half hour. He was now laying on the grass, making out with Louisa and getting a little too heated to be in public. Hey, it's Haley, isn't it? I heard a voice making me look up. It was Avery's friend called Lewis standing in front of me, smiling sweetly at me. He was kind of cute. I nodded, smiling back at him. He took his seat down next to me, turning to face me. You okay? You seem like you don't want to be here. It's just not my thing. I think I'm gonna head back down the street and grab a cab home. Avery was meant to be my ride, but I don't think that's going to happen. I said with a sigh. Lewis looked over to where Louisa and Avery were and shook his head. One thing you need to know, Haley, they always end up hooking up. It's been that way since they were 14 or something. It's how they are. I don't think it's fair considering that he was meant to be with you. He said, giving me a sympathetic smile. 
it's fine. Avery and I were just hanging out. We're just friends. I said, acting like I didn't care. I'm gonna go. Bye. I said. I'll walk back if you like. Because you aren't going to get him anytime soon. He laughed. Oh, yeah. uh, no, it's okay. Uh, thank you, though. I smiled. You sure? I don't mind. He asked. Honestly, it's fine. It was nice meeting you, though. Hey. I said again. You too. He smiled back. I said a quick goodbye before I headed off. I think it was the right time for me to leave. I grabbed my stuff and rushed off as everyone was busy doing something else. Lewis was watching after me, which I did appreciate. I rushed back down the street, keeping an eye out behind me and around me. You never know who's around. I was thankful when I finally managed to get a taxi, which would take me home by 11. I climbed into the back of the cab and told him my address. I sunk back into the seat, sighing, and found myself wanting to cry. I was angry that he would make me go home by myself, ignoring me like that. But. What could I expect from the bad boy? If he wants to be that way, then that's up to him. He's probably not going to bother with me again anyway. He probably only did it today because he was bored. I had never been so relieved to get home. I wanted to climb into my bed, forget tonight ever happened, and sleep straight through the night until I had to get up for school the next day. My parents were already in bed, which I was glad of. That meant there would be no questions asked. I changed into my PJs, climbed into bed, and set my alarm for the next morning. As I settled down, my phone started to go off. I grabbed it, and I saw it was Avery calling me. I decided to ignore it. And then it went again. And again. And again. I groaned, answering it. What? I said, annoyed. Where'd you go, kitten? One minute you were there, then the next puff you were gone. Are you a ninja? You okay? He slurred, clearly more wasted now than when I left him. I found myself giggling for a moment before snapping out of it. I'm home, and I'm fine. Thank you. Go away. I, I would like to go to sleep now. And with that, I hung up. I was angry at him. I didn't want to talk to him again, especially when he was in that state. He tried to call me again, but I ignored it. And then he left me alone. I made myself comfortable, finally, and got some sleep. I was dreading tomorrow even more. End of chapter five. The bad boy protects me. Chapter six. The bad boys wasted. Haley's POV. I woke up during the night, checking the time on my phone. 2.30 a.m. Oh, come on. I have to be up in a few hours. I saw that I had four missed calls and three text messages, all from Avery. The last one he sent only five minutes ago. I opened it, read it, and saw that he said, I'm at your home. Let me come in, or I'll knock the door. I swear he better be joking. I decided it would be safer to call him back. Make sure he's just messing with me. He soon answered. Baby girl, let me in, I'm lost. He slurred, laughing. Where are you? I asked. Sitting at your step outside. He said. I am going to kill him. I snuck out of bed and crept downstairs. I was thankful for my parents both being asleep and for sleeping like logs because I didn't really want to explain this to them. I opened the front door and a body soon fell on top of me. 
hitting the ground and laughing as he did so. Avery? I looked down at him. I couldn't believe the state he was in. His hair was a mess. His eyes were popping out of his head. He reeked of alcohol, and his jeans were not buttoned right. There were grass stains on the knees, too. He had a cut head, and his hands were cut, too. What the heck? Had he been fighting again? Can help me. I'm a little drunk. He laughed. I groaned, shaking my head before reaching down. I gave him a hand to help him to his feet, which he could barely manage. I wrapped my arm around him, holding him up as best I could. What happened to you? Were you fighting again? I said, annoyed. No, Phil, I think. Dunno. Oh well. He chuckled. How did you even get here? Why didn't you go home? I said. I think I walked. No, go home. Wanted to see you since you left. Why did you leave me? He added with a pout. Well, because you were being an ass and ignoring me. I need to get you upstairs before anyone hears you. Keep your mouth shut, okay? And try not to fall on your ass, please? I said, shaking my head. He nodded, wetting his lips at me and giving me his best puppy dog eyes. Yes, they're not going to work because I was seriously annoyed. I can't believe that he made me come home by myself and then had the nerve to show up at my house in this state at this time. He tried his best to stay quiet as I got him to my room. It was hard work, but I managed. As soon as I was in my room, I closed the door, putting a chair against it. I threw Avery down on my bed. I headed into the bathroom, grabbed the first aid kit and some water for him. I made my way over to him. Can you sit up? I need to clean you up. I said. He groaned. Managing in the end to sit up on the edge of my bed. He was looking at me with a dorky smile on his lips. I couldn't help but giggle a little bit, shaking my head. Why did you leave? He repeated as I cleaned him up. Because you were being an ass. You were ignoring me and I needed to get home. I said, concentrating on what I was doing. He winced in pain as I cleaned him. (laughs) Stop being a baby. It's only hurting a little bit. And it's only a little cut. I laughed. He rolled his eyes at me, groaning annoyed. I shrugged, smirking at him. His hand reached up and landed on my cheek. His eyes stared at me hard, but I ignored him. I continued to make his face clean before pulling away from his touch and getting to work on his hands. They were all cut up and bleeding. Maybe he was right. Maybe he did fall. It would explain a lot. Why on earth would you want to get yourself in this state? Anything could have happened to him. Once I cleaned him up, I sat next to him and turned him to face me. Do you hate me now? He asked sadly. What? No, of course not. I shouldn't have expected anything else from you. It was my fault for thinking you cared if I got home safe or not. I said, shrugging it off. It looked like there was slight pain in his eyes when I said that. But I was only being honest with him. I did plan on getting you home, promise. He said. He did seem a little bit more sober now than he did 20 minutes ago. Strange. I looked at him, not sure if I really believed him or not. I'm not gonna find out the truth now anyway, so why worry? I'm going to get you some coffee, strong coffee. Stay put and keep your mouth shut. My parents are only down the hall, okay? I said. 
Okay. He said, looking at the ground, seeming to be embarrassed now. I headed downstairs quietly, making him some coffee. An extra strong cup, like I said. I grabbed some juice, too, and a couple of snacks. Maybe if he ate, it would soak up the alcohol? I had a feeling I wouldn't be getting back to sleep anytime soon. I crept back into my room and didn't get caught. My parents would be up by six because they had a meeting out of town. They wouldn't come into my room when they leave that early, which for this situation is perfect. I could only imagine the reaction if they caught Avery in my room right now, especially in the state that he was in. He was sitting with his back against my headboard, staring into space when I arrived. He looked lost in his thoughts. You okay? I asked. He looked at me, nodding, faking a smile for me. I knew he was lying. I made my way over, taking the spot next to him, passing him some coffee and something to eat. Thanks. He slurred. A silence filled the room as he drank his coffee. I looked at him, wondering what was going on in that head of his. Yeah. Haley, I'm sorry. He pouted. I should never have come here tonight. Maybe I should go. You're not going anywhere in that state, Avery. You're staying right here where I can keep an eye on you. I said sternly. A smirk crept up his lips and his hands landed on my thigh. Here we go again, I sighed, shaking my head before looking at him. You do care. He smirked. Whatever. I said, rolling my eyes at him. His hand started to rub my upper thigh, looking at me. His eyes looked darker. I knew what he was thinking. Come on, kitten, don't be like that. I said I was sorry. What else do you want from me? I was having fun. Maybe you should try it sometime. He winked. Fun? You're wasted on drugs and alcohol. Why would I want to get myself in that state? I said, annoyed at him. Because it is fun. Makes everything a little easier. Cannot all have a great home and parents, Haley. You have both your parents, who work, who look after you. Me? I have a mother that's an alcoholic that is addicted to painkillers. I look after her. She does not look after me. So what if I like to get wasted? It's who I am. You know that. You heard everything about me. Don't sit there judging me, Haley. He hissed. I'm not judging you at all, Avery. All I'm saying is that what appeals to you does not appeal to me. Don't start being a prick to me because you're drunk and high. I hissed back, upset now. I felt like crying again. Oh no, I think I was. Why? I shook my head, turning away from him and sitting at the edge of my bed. I heard him sigh, and then the bed moved. I had a feeling he was going to leave, and maybe it would be better if he did. I soon felt his hands on my hips from behind, his hot breath tickling my neck. Haley, sorry, I never meant to upset you. He said. I took a deep breath, looking over my shoulder at him. He was barely an inch from my face. I felt my breath hitch in my throat as I looked at him. His eyes were searching my face. I closed my eyes, pulling away from him before I did something stupid. His soft, warm lips fell on the skin of my collarbone, kissing their way down. I shut my eyes tighter, groaning, my head falling back. I know you want me, Haley. You, why keep denying it? He mumbled against the skin of my neck. His lips now found their way there too. I was not as put off by the smell of alcohol the way I was earlier. My body was too weak to think about it. I shook my head, knowing no words could fall from my lips if I tried to tell him no. You 
you do? He groaned in my ear. His hands were now underneath my t-shirt, stroking the skin of my hips. He needed to stop because if he didn't, I might end up giving him what he wants. Haley, turn around and look at me. Look me straight in the eye. Tell me you don't want me. He whispered against my skin. I couldn't do that because I'm a terrible liar. If I turn around and face him, he's going to see right through me and see that he's right. I shook my head, not moving a single inch. He pulled away from me. My body felt cold, lonely all of a sudden. I think he's given up now, which works out better for me. How wrong of me to believe that. He soon appeared in front of me, standing between my legs. His shirt now off. When did that happen? I swallowed hard at the sight of him. I whimpered as I eyed his toned body. A beautiful, sexy, muscular physique. I gripped onto the bedding next to me because if I never did that, I would definitely reach out for him. I didn't want to do that. I finally managed to look at his face and I saw him standing there, his famous smirk on his face. And I felt my face getting warmer by the second. I'm gonna kiss you now. He said, stepping closer to me. No. I breathed out. Yes. He said. He was now leaning down. His face was inching closer to mine, meaning his lips were inching closer to mine. I was trying to keep it all together, but all that disappeared when his lips fell over me. I let out a loud whimper, his lips brushing mine. His hands landed on my hips, laying me down on the bed, him following me. I know I should push him away, but I can't. My back soon hit the mattress, his body quickly falling over, his lips crashing against mine. I wrapped my arms around his neck, him holding my waist and deepening the kiss. I moaned into the kiss, Avery doing the same. I felt his warm tongue run over my bottom lip before gently tugging it between his teeth. I groaned, opening my mouth. Avery pushing his tongue into my mouth, falling against my own. I wrapped my legs around his hips, and he pressed himself against me as I did. I've never felt this weak my entire life. I let my fingers trace the muscles of his back, him groaning under my touch. One of his hands found their way to my thigh, gripping it tight. The other was sliding further under my top, his fingertips tracing my stomach. All of a sudden, I snapped out of it. What am I doing? Stop! I said, pushing him off me. Whatever, Haley. He said, turning away from me. I lay there, my breathing heavy, my heart racing. I can't believe I did that. If I never stopped when I did, I would have gone further. And that's not who I am. I'm not that kind of girl. I can't make him think that I am. I've never felt this stupid in my entire life. I shifted, sliding under the covers and turning the opposite direction, my back to him, and not another word was spoken. Soon his breathing got uneven, which told me he had fallen asleep. I closed my eyes, not being able to fight sleep anymore. I don't know how I'm going to face him tomorrow after that. End of chapter six. The bad boy protects me. Chapter seven. The morning after. Haley's POV. I woke up to an empty bed. Avery nowhere in sight. When did he leave? I didn't hear him. 
Well, maybe it's a good thing that he did after what happened last night. I shook my head, disappointed at myself for what I let happen. I didn't want to move, but I had to, or otherwise I would be late for school. I groaned to myself and pushed myself out of bed. I grabbed my phone to check it. There was a text from Layla telling me that she was homesick today. Great. Now I had to face this whole day alone. Maybe I should call in sick too. No, that would be a horrible idea. My parents would kill me. So I jumped in a quick shower before getting dressed in a pair of jeans, boots, and an oversized hoodie. I pulled my hair into a side pony before heading out to grab breakfast, before heading out for school. I put my headphones in and made my way to school. When I arrived, I saw Avery talking to a couple of people. He looked up, saw me, looked at me for a moment before turning away. So he was ignoring me. Great. I guess he never got what he wanted, so he's moved on. He was more like Joshua than I realized. I shook my head, looked at the ground, and headed to my locker. Haley. I heard an angry growl from behind me. A voice very well known to me, Joshua. I decided to ignore him, not even look at him because I'm not in the mood. The next minute, he grabbed me roughly, pulling me around to face him. I was terrified because I saw the look on his face. He was furious and it scared me. I'd never seen that look before. Well, not directed at me, at least. Avery? Yes. Me? No. He pushed me against the locker, punching the locker next to me. Tell your guard dog to stay the fuck out of my way, because next time he will not be as lucky, son of a bitch. He hissed. It was then that I noticed his black eye and bruised face. I knew Avery fought with someone yesterday. I think it was Joshua he fought. He, he, he's not my guard dog. I stammered out. He is something. What, are you fucking him? Is that what it is? Is that why he's always defending you? If you are, you are a fucking idiot because he will drag you down with him. He snapped. What? I'm not having sex with Avery. Even if I was, that has nothing to do with you. He can't be any worse than you though, right? At least he's not pretending to be in love with me like you did. I growled at him, fighting back tears. It was the first time since the whole thing happened that I've actually stood up to him. Joshua laughed at me, reaching and stroking my cheek. Maybe not, but sweetheart, I could get you back with a click of my fingers. Because even though I never loved you, I know you loved me. You still do. It's written all over your sad little face. I see him again, or he gets in my way again, he'll pay for it. You will pay for it. Joshua winked, kissing me before laughing and walking away. I stood there, not knowing what to do or say. Did that just happen? How dare he kiss me? Not going to lie, as much as I hated Joshua for what he did to me, a part of me did still love him. That kiss, even though it didn't mean anything, made my heart race for a moment. I felt tears run down my cheeks. I could feel people staring at me, laughing at me. I needed to get away from here. I ran out to school, running straight into someone as I ran out. Haley, what's wrong? You okay? I heard Avery's voice say, a worried look in his eye. Leave me the fuck alone, Avery. I hissed, pushing past him. I don't care if I got into trouble with my parents. I couldn't be here, not today. I ran all the way home, not stopping until I got to my front door. I sent my mom a quick text, telling her that I was sick and I was not at school. 
I knew she wasn't going to get it until the meeting was over. I could worry about that later. I ran to my bedroom, threw myself down on my bed, and cried and screamed into my pillow. What have I done to deserve all of this? I've always tried to be a nice person. So why is this happening to me? I kicked off my shoes, threw everything on the floor, climbed under the covers, and curled up and cried. I hated my life right now. I must have dozed off because the next thing I knew, someone was shaking me gently. Haley, are you okay? I heard a voice say. I opened my eyes and looked up to find Avery standing next to the bed, looking at me with a worried look on his face. What do you want? Go away, Avery. I snapped and turned the other way. Did he listen to me? No. I felt the bed go down. Then a hot body pressed against mine. A hand fell on my hips while another stroked my hair. I turned around to face him. And there he was, staring at me. Haley, what happened? He asked. Like you give a damn, Avery. You don't need to act like you care. It's okay. You can go now. I said, shaking my head. He reached up and wiped the few stray tears away with his thumb. I closed my eyes, sighed, and leaned into his touch. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right here. Of course I give a damn. Why would I be here? To see if you can get any more of what you nearly got last night? I murmured. Whoa, that was uncalled for, Haley. He said defensively. It isn't after what you did last night, okay? So just leave me alone. I don't want you here. Shouldn't you be in school anyway? I sighed, turning away from him. Haley, it is 4 p.m. School is over. I'm sorry about last night. All of last night. Ugh, whatever. Just leave me alone. I snapped, pulling the covers over my head. I heard him sigh stand up from my bed and walk away. Good, I don't want him here. Though, there is a part of me that does. I waited 10 minutes before I moved out of my bed, giving him time to leave. I checked to see a text from my mom. Okay, sweetie, feel better soon. Your dad and I will not make it home tonight. Will you be okay? I'll be fine. See you tomorrow after school. Love you. Love you too. Call me if you need anything. I shoved my phone into my back pocket, heading down to find food since I haven't eaten since breakfast. The closer I got to the kitchen, I heard noises. It sounded like someone was in my kitchen. Someone was in the house. Oh God, what do I do? I looked around, trying to find something that I could use as a weapon and crept towards the kitchen. I smelt food cooking. Surely someone robbing the house wouldn't decide to try and cook. It's not like they decided, hey, you know what? I'm hungry, maybe I should make some food. That would be silly, right? I still kept my guard up as I entered the kitchen. You aren't very good at creeping up on someone, are you, kitten? I heard a familiar laugh say. Avery? I thought he left. What are you still doing here? I thought I made it clear that I wanted you to go. I said, annoyed. I thought I made it clear that I don't listen. He turned, smirking at me. I'm making mac and cheese for us because you have been sleeping all day, which means you haven't eaten. He said, shaking his head in disappointment, it seemed. No, seriously, why are you here? Are you going to ignore me some more and then make me feel like crap again? Last night, not enough for you? I said, glaring at him. Haley, stop being damn stubborn. Sit down and shut up. I was drunk. 
I could not have done what I did last night. Any of it. Can we go back to being friends again? Now, since you had the time to sulk? He said, a stern look on his face as he stared at me. <sighs> Whatever! I huffed, storming off. I stormed into the living room like a child. Avery was laughing at me. I threw myself down on the sofa, still feeling tired even though I was sleeping for more than seven hours. I switched on the TV, put on Criminal Minds. I loved that show, especially Spencer Reed. He was cute and geeky. That hopefully was going to make me feel better. I listened as Avery rattled about in my kitchen, cooking. Never thought he would be the type to cook, but then again, he did say last night that he looks after his mom. I guess he would have had to learn to cook then. Dinner will be ready soon. What are you watching? He said, lifting my legs and sitting down, placing my legs over his lap. Criminal Minds. I said, not turning away from the TV to look at him. Cool. You going to stay mad at me all night? Yep. That was all I said, making sure to pop the pee for effect. Okay, well, this night is going to be awkward, sitting in silence all night. He shrugged. All night? How long was he planning to stay here for? I turned to him, sending him daggers. Uh, how long are you planning to stay here? My parents will be home in a couple of hours. I said, lying through my teeth. Bullshit. Your mom left a message on the answer phone saying they will not be home until tomorrow. Nice try. And I'm not letting you stay alone all night. Are you kidding me? I'm a big girl. I don't need a babysitter. Thank you very much. I said, annoyed. You sure? The way you are acting is childlike. Maybe you do need a babysitter. I'm staying. He said, laughing. And I'm not taking no for an answer. I need to nip home and see my mom first. Make sure she's eaten today. You can come with me. Okay. I said, after what he said last night, I knew that his mom meant the world to him and he had to look after her. I didn't want to get in the way of that. Then when we get back, I owe you chick flicks. He said, pulling a face and making me laugh. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Revenge is sweet. I smirked, perking up a little bit. I'm gonna regret this, aren't I? Yep. I smiled. Before anything else was said, the oven timer went off, telling us that dinner was ready. Thank God, my stomach was so ready to eat. Let's go eat, then we can go check on my mom, stop at the shop, and get some snacks for the movies. Okay, cool. I said, skipping to the kitchen. I don't know how he managed it. He cheered me up. As soon as he set the food in front of me, I dived right in groaning as the food entered my mouth because it was so good. This guy's got skills. Why'd you like it? He chuckled, winking at me. Maybe tonight with Avery won't be so bad after all. End of chapter seven. The Bad Boy Protects Me. Chapter eight. Meeting the Bad Boy's Mom. Haley's POV. Avery and I pulled up outside his house and then headed in. I apologize in advance. I'm not sure how mom is today, if she's having a good or a bad day. He said, worried. It's okay. Don't worry about it, okay? I smiled. He nodded, leading us inside. We headed into what I assumed to be the living room. A petite, pretty brunette woman was sitting on the sofa, staring into space. Mom. Avery said softly. Hello, my sweet boy. She gushed, 
turning to face us. Oh, you brought company. You should have warned me. I would have tried to be more put together. She said, embarrassed, turning to face me. I'm, I'm so sorry you had to see me in the state. She said, fixing her hair. Oh, don't be silly. You, you look fine. You're beautiful. I can see where Avery gets his good looks from. I smiled. Oh, thank you. His mother chuckled, relaxing a bit. Avery turned to me, gave me a small Ooh. smile, yeah. and mouthed, thank you. I returned the smile. Mom, this is Haley. Haley, my mom, Christy. He said, introducing us. Haley, that is a very pretty name. It's nice to meet you. She smiled sweetly at me, but she looked tired. She looked like she had a lot to deal with in her life, which saddened me. Thank you. I blushed. You too, I added. So, how do the two of you know each other? It's not like my son to bring someone around here to meet me. She smiled. School. School. We both said in sync, making Christy laugh. Oh, wait, Avery, is this the one you were defending yeah. yesterday? She asked. He told his mom about that? I guess she must have asked when she saw his face. So that was why he was fighting with Joshua. Yeah. Because of me. It's sweet in a way, but at the same time, I don't want him to get into trouble because of me. Yes, I have some macaroni here for you. I'll heat it. He smiled at her. Thank you, son. I'll get to know Haley a little bit better. She said, smiling at me. Okay. He nodded, heading into the kitchen. I went over, sat down next to Christy on the sofa. She soon turned her attention to me. Tell me. How is Avery getting on at school? Is he staying out of trouble? She asked. He's getting on okay. He seems to be staying out of trouble, from what I can tell. I smiled. That's good. Are you and my Avery friends... Uh, dating? She asked. Uh, we're just friends. I replied. Oh. Oh. That's a shame. My boy could do with dating a girl like you. A nice girl. I know he doesn't do that, or yeah. doesn't have time, since he has to look after me so much. I feel guilty about that. She says sadly, clearly feeling guilty. I'm sure he's going to find a really nice girl soon. It's just when he's ready. And he loves you so very much. Looking after you is what he wants to do. I smiled, giving her hand a small squeeze. She nodded, giving me a small smile. I could tell it gets to her that Avery is the one looking after her rather than her looking after him. We chatted with each other some more until he came back with her meal. The two of you not eating? She asked. We ate at Haley's. I'm going to stay with Haley tonight because her parents are out of town. Will you be okay? Yes, I will be fine, my love. I'll go get a shower and then go to bed. Yeah. I'm exhausted today, she said. You sure? He asked, Christy nodding. We stayed with her for a bit as she had her meal, Avery cleaning up before Christy went off to bed. Yeah. Then we went back to his. He was unusually quiet. Avery, are you okay? I asked as we drove. Yes. Thank you for being nice to my mom. Not many people are because of her addiction problem. He said sadly. She's really nice. I like her. I can tell you have a really strong bond with her. I smiled. 
Yes, we do. We've only ever really had each other. We've got to stick together. My father was never in the picture. Well, he would show up now and again, then disappear again. Not seen him in about five years now, I think. He said, shrugging off the last part. I'm sorry. Your so-called father does not deserve either of you in his life. If that's the way he is. I said. I guess. He said, managing a small smile. I got the feeling for him that he didn't want to talk about it anymore. So I decided to let it drop. A silence fell between us. I could see he was away in another world. He seemed to have a lot on his mind. I wanted to reach over and give his hand a supportive squeeze, but something told me he wouldn't like that. I sighed, leaned back in the chair, and watched him for a moment. I smiled a little. He was gorgeous, and I couldn't deny that. I pulled away before I was caught. We pulled up outside the store, heading in and grabbing a basket. So, what do you fancy? Well... He started smirking at me. Don't even say it or I'm going to kick your ass. I said before giggling. Fine. He pouted and walked away from me. I shook my head, laughing before catching up with him. He went up and down the aisles, grabbing anything we fancied from popcorn to chocolate to sweets, etc., etc. More than we needed. We would never make our way through all of this stuff tonight. Well, I won't. What now? I think we have enough, don't you? I said, pointing to the basket. Maybe you're right. He chuckled. Thank goodness for that. Any more and I would have to rob a bank to pay for all of it. Once we got to the cash desk, we end up having to go halvesies on everything. The best way possible. As we were walking out, we heard a voice call. You blew me off for her? I heard someone huff. I looked up and saw Mandy's best friend Rachel standing there, glaring at Avery. What if I did? Avery said, no emotion in his face. You promised you would meet me after school. You never showed. For what? Because you wanted to hang out with little Miss Prude there? She hissed, glaring at me. Great! Another reason for that group to make my life a living hell. Sweetie, did your mom never tell you not to listen to a bad boy? That lies for a living. She chuckled. Plus, I had you yesterday. You're nothing special, to be honest. Maybe learn how to fuck right, then get back to me. He said smugly. I stood there shocked. I didn't like this side of him. Not one bit. Fuck you, Avery. I hate you. Enjoy your little virgin. She hissed, flipped her hair, and walked away. He turned to face me, a blank expression on his face, like he couldn't care less what he said to Rachel. I can't stand her, but that was harsh. I shook my head, turned away from him, and walked back to the car, climbing in as soon as he opened it. He climbed in after me. The hell's your problem? Looks like a kill. I would have been dead with the way you looked at me. He asked, glaring at me. The way you spoke to her was disgusting, Avery. I don't like that girl, but that was really cruel. I felt sorry for her. Is that how you treat all girls all the time? I asked. Yes, so what? They know what I'm like. They come to me, they should know better. But none of them ever learn. Haley, I never pretended to be anyone else. You have no right getting mad at me this way. He said, annoyed. Ugh, whatever. Can we go, please? I asked, turning away from him. Yeah. He groaned, shaking his head before starting the car. I'm not sure if I really wanted his company after that. Is that how he's going to treat me in the end? Like a play toy? 
At least I have the sense not to have sex with him, which I'm glad of now, because if that's how he treats people he has sex with, no thank you. As soon as we pull up outside my house, I climb out of the car and rush into my home. If he followed or not, that was his choice. I dumped the bags in the kitchen before heading into the living room and sitting on the sofa. I sighed, ran my hands through my hair, and shook my head. Is this how this is going to be? One minute you're fine with me, talking and laughing, then the next you're mad at me? He said, appearing into the living room. Why do you treat people like that? I asked, trying to stay calm. Because they let me. I would rather them be treated that way than me. He shrugged. Is that how you're going to start treating me? Like crap, just because you can? I asked. What? No, of course not. Then why am I any different from anyone else, Avery? I asked, confused. Why treat everyone one way and then treat me a completely different one? You just are. All of them are assholes and bitches that deserve it. You don't. Simple as that. He said, shrugging again. You are the most confusing human being I have ever met. Do you know that? You ever try to treat me like that and it will be bye-bye, Mr. Bad Boy. Do you understand? I said, raising an eyebrow at him. He chuckled. That is because I'm one of a kind, baby girls. He winked. I shook my head, giggling. Why could I not stay mad at him for long? He was a jackass. Let's face it, we all know that, but for some reason, I can't stay mad at him. I can't hate him. I knew from my own sanity I should stay away, but I never wanted to. I found myself wanting him around, even though he has a massive pain in my ass. All forgiven? He asked the dorkiest smile on his face. It was kind of cute. Maybe. For now, anyway. Let's see how long it takes for you to make me mad again. I said and then giggled. I will say maybe a few hours. Then you will find another reason to get mad at me. I'm okay with that, though. Now let's get this torturous night started. He laughed. What movies are you planning to torture me with? Hmm... First, we go with The Notebook, then Bridget Jones' Diary, and then lastly, tonight, let's do a Cinderella story. <laughs> I giggled. Oh, God help me. Let's get this over with. He said, rolling his eyes. You're the one who made the bets. No one is to blame here except for you. <gasps> yeah. I said smugly. He rolled his eyes again, falling on the sofa next to me. I could not wait to torture him with chick flicks. It was gonna be a fun night. End of chapter eight.